Yo, what up, bros? Okay, so over the last couple of days, you guys have been hanging out in stream and have noticed I have found one of the most lucrative, at least in my opinion, lucrative farming strategies that I've come here to share with you. Now, before I get into that, I just wanted to spend a minute and say thank you for all the love. Thank you for all the support. Thank you for all the everything. Welcome to all the new people that have been watching both the stream, the YouTube, hang out in the discord i have been in discord chats with like 20 of you guys at a time and it's been absolutely fantastic so if you haven't headed on over to the discord the link is down below if you haven't been on the twitch to hang out we'd love to have you but i was given a strategy by a viewer named dom if i said his whole name i'd probably get demonetized but you know who you are thank you um and he saw it from the british exile so big shout out to you and a few other people i think chat told me firegrass was doing it and i have taken a take on it and it has been absolutely wild literally wild what if i told you that you can double or triple your investment by printing infinite conqueror maps and infinite wing sex them? Now, I know a lot of you guys are going to be like, wait a minute, that's insane. That's crazy. How are you doing that? What did you do and how did you do it? Well, that's easy. I'm going to show you a strategy revolving around sextants. I'm going to talk to you about the sextants and I'm going to explain every step of the way of what I did for this strategy and break it down to you on the most basics of levels. One of the things that I did in my rate video was I took everything and I broke it down into an extremely simple, simple level. And it helped a lot of people get into it and it helped a lot of people really appreciate it. And I know if you guys are more of the high-end Path of Exile player, you're going to look at this and you're going to go, just tell me what to do. I'm going to copy it. Don't worry. It's real simple. And there'll be little steps and chapters and you can skip around to what you need to know on how to do the build or how to do the strategy. The first thing that I'm going to say is if you're going to attempt this strategy, one of the biggest things that you need is you need to have your atlas filled out and you need your watchstones. So if you don't have your watchstones, pause the video, go run some blights, make some currency, buy a carrier or two, go hang out, and do what you need to do and get all four of your watchstones. Once you've obtained all four of your watchstones and you have them socketed into your map device, then you're gonna put on very specific sextants. Now we're gonna need four sextants in this case and each one of these sextants, it doesn't matter the amount of uses that are on the watchstones all that matters is that the watchstone has a use because we're not worrying about the uses because we'll take care of that in a minute. now the four watchstones and the four sextant modifiers that we're going to use the first one is sacred grove we're going to put a harvest on every single map without a doubt harvest is one of the biggest money making strategies in this strategy or one of the money biggest one yeah one of the biggest money making things in this strategy so we're going to have a sacred grove on every single map we're going to pair that with life forces doubled or duplicated harvest monsters in your map drop 100 percent more life all right they have 100 percent more life so they're a little bit harder but they drop duplicated life force so that's really good now this strategy revolves around using a lot of yellow life force so we specifically want to target the yellow crops and have our harvest plots have more yellow plants now when we do the harvest we'll we want to pick and choose in a certain way and we'll touch on that in a minute the third sextant modifier that we want to use is conqueror maps now we're going to tie conqueror maps in with our atlas tree our atlas tree is going to give us quantity and nodes that are very specific to our conqueror maps so we need to take conqueror maps we also take this node so that we can self-sustain an infinite amount of conqueror maps and never need to go buy more we also over sustain our conqueror maps due to map nodes and duplicating from altars which we'll get into in a little bit and lastly, the biggest tech of them, the whole strategy, the biggest chunk of your money that you're going to be making is the ability to print and create infinite wing scarabs. Yes, literally infinite. Yes, literally all of them. Yes, all of them forever and ever and ever and ever. And you're going to say to me, well, that's cool. I'm making wing scarabs. Some of them are good and some of them are bad. How do I constantly only get the good ones? And how do I only get wing scarabs that will make me profit and do things well? Well, we'll go over that. This sextant though says a wing scarab will drop off of a possessed mob. So the first three possessed mobs drop wing scarabs. And paired with our atlas tree, we will have five guaranteed possessed mobs throughout the mob with the sands though that will always drop a wing scarab. So they 
basics of breaking down the strategies we're going to open a map we're going to go in the map we're going to clear the map we're going to break some altars we're going to do an altar strategy we're going to kill the boss the boss is going to drop a conqueror map we're going to go into the portal with the conqueror we're going to kill the conqueror get a crest we're going to leave that we're going to go to the harvest we're going to do the harvest last we're going to clear the harvest we're going to get a bunch of yellow life force and we're going to rinse pretty simple pretty straightforward and then eventually you'll have profits that look very similar to this tab in front of you where you can see a ton and i mean a ton of winged scarabs a ton of eldritch currency a very large number of just tier 16 maps a large number of conqueror crests divination cards the works we'll break all that down in the profit section coming up in a little bit but you have the big question i get a bunch of winged scarabs and how do i make them good and what's the catch how do i print infinite winged scarabs well one of the things that a lot of people don't know about and one of the things that i can show you is how to do that so say you wanted to farm one of the big winged scarabs or you want to use your winged scarabs to farm your magic line strategy or you want to use the scarabs to farm your strong box strategy or you want just more cartographer scarabs or more div card scarabs this is the best thing you can do. And since we're doing harvest, we have infinite harvest juice. We're going to take a stack of winged scarabs that we're not going to use, and we're going to bring them to our harvest horde crafting station, and we're going to type the word scarab. Now, I'm going to reiterate. Because we're running harvest, and we're creating an infinite number of harvest juice, both in red, yellow, and blue, we can do this without taking a major loss. Now, the profit section will reflect how much harvest juice I have before this test in front of you, and I will talk about my profits with doing this and without doing this. Now, to show you, we have a set of 10 winged cartographer scarabs. This costs 300 harvest juice to click. Pretty much pennies on the dollar. These are worth 35 C a piece. If I click it one time, we get divination scarabs. These are now worth 50 C a piece. <laughs> and just like that, you take your bad ones and turn them into good ones. And to show you it again, we'll take another stack of five and we'll type in the word scarab once again. You can notice the cost now was cut in half because the stack of the scarabs that we're working with is cut in half and we'll click it again. One click gives us blight. We don't want blight. Blight's not a big money maker for this. The second click gives us reliquary. And once again, we go from 35C to 50C. Now we've printed reliquary scarabs and we just kick our cost back up to here. Pretty kind of cool, right? So the meat and potatoes of this is we're going open a map we're going to run the map we're going to do the thing and now you're going to say to me well now earlier you mentioned that the sextants never run out you've shown me how that i can get infinite scarabs and print them the way they want but how do i maintain the sextant and what do i do well if you're like me and you have brain lag every once in a while i really really recommend buying sextants with multiple uses you can do this with sextants on one use, but if you mess up, you're gonna lose your sextant and the sextant investment cost you get started is pretty pricey. As the winged scarab sextant, if it still exists after this and you're watching this, when I bought mine, it was nine divines for 16 uses. When I was looking earlier before filming this video, it was nine divines for like three uses. And when I was helping a friend last night in Discord do it, there was like two available and they were like seven divine uses. So the price of this sextant fluctuates Drastically, today is October 21st at 2 o'clock in the morning Eastern Time. So the prices that you see in this guide are all a reflection of this time. So if they change or they spike or they drop or the market crashes, I'm sorry. Not my intention. Anyways, because we're getting infinite maps, we're going to take our map, scour it, we're going to chisel it, and then we're going to alk our map, and we want two very important we want item quantity over 80 percent and we want pack size over 20 percent. if we get that which we have in this case here and the mods are stuff that you can run on your build because you have a strong mapping build you take the map here you type the word sextant and you enchant it with 2500 yellow which is one divine a map i know crazy hear me out profits are coming i will prove to you it's profitable just bear with me keep watching and if you think I'm crazy and you're like, I'm not doing this, that's nuts, you can totally tell me down below. But if you're also doing this and I should stop telling people, don't yell at me in the comments. Just cheer me on. I'm out of life, yellow life force. I didn't buy any more for the sake of the video because I wanted to give you accurate profit. 
And then I would just put this on the map to not use my charges. And this is what I mean is if you're silly and you forget to use it, sometimes you kill charges. And in my case, I've killed multiple charges. Now I've done a hundred map tests for you and I've come to talk to you about the profits because I know that's what you guys want to know and I know that's what you guys want to see. So I have a handy dandy spreadsheet because we're Path of Exile players and we love spreadsheets. Now, for this strategy, we have the Sextants. We're going to use Contain Sacred Grove. I did all the costs in four use and 16 use Sextants because if you're like me and you're silly and you're going to burn through your charges and you never want to make that mistake, so you never want to delete. So, the map contains Sacred Grove. At the time of filming and when I bought it, it was 150C, which is about 0.8 divines at current prices of 170 because the vine prices tanked. They went down from 200 to 170. And just to show you, if you're watching this video and you're looking at it, and I, well, no, they're, they've gone even further down since I've started recording. We're going to leave everything at 170 because they're 160, and I don't know if they'll stay at 160 in the morning. Conqueror maps with four use cost me about 115 C. Yellow plants four use was 120 C. And a winged scarab at 16 uses was nine divines. My grand total cost for sextants was 11.2 divines. It's a very steep cost of entry. Yes, I agree with you. To get rolling, you also need a large sum of yellow life force. I started with five divines worth of yellow life force, or in this case, two divines with three extra on the side. I ended up spending a total of 36 divines in yellow light or 34 divines in yellow life force just to get rolling. On top of that, inside the map device, I used Fortune's Favors the Brave, which we'll talk about, which will tie into our Atlas tree in a second. I used Elder Scarabs for more quantity and pack size, and I used Sac Fragments. So Sac Fragments for quantity, Elder Scarabs for pack size, and for 100 maps, my total cost was 5.2 divines. So my initial setup cost was 16 and a half divines. My cost in life force was 34 divines, which net me 50.5 divines to run 100 maps. It's a lot. Spoiler, you can see a little tease of how much I started making in profits. Just 72 divines and winged scarabs, but we'll get there. So we know our cost of entry to enter this strategy. And if you're still like, yes, I want to do it, we will talk about the Atlas tree now. And we'll go into what you should expect from the Atlas tree and how to do this. Because we're doing a harvest strategy and a quantity strategy, we're going to be doing a grand design setup. Grand design says your maps have a 1% increase pack size per allocated notable on the passive tree. What that means is we're going to take a lot of these larger nodes, like Heart of the Grove, which is a notable, or Amplified Energy, which is a notable, and that's going to give us more pack size. We're also going to be taking a set up for the red acres. I like the red side a lot more than the blue side. It's personal preference. You can do red or blue, whatever your build can handle better. And we're going to take the nodes that would give us more altars and stuff like that. We're also going to be taking Eldritch Gaze. So all of our altars have an additional downside, about a 50% increase upside because we want to do a boss rushing strategy where we kill the boss, trigger all the altars and get a bunch of quantity and duplications and all that fun jazz. If you know the altar strategy farming and you've seen it in another video you know what i mean if you don't essentially what you're going to do is you're going to open a map you're going to blitz the boss kill the boss clear the map look for the altars activate all the altars that best suit your character and what you can and can't do and you're going to go for more quantity more pack size currencies duplicated so forth and so on i also took a wrath of the cosmos my build currently can do wrath of the cosmos if your build can't do it it is not needed it is not mandatory it just helps you get more Eldritch Currencies when it increases your profit per hour. But if your build can't do it, I don't recommend taking it. Even with my Reap build, you guys know my Reap build and you've been following along with it. You know that it's very strong and very tanky and it dies all the time. My current time in maps is about three to five minutes. With my Reap build, I'm re-rolling Ethereal Knives in the morning or right after I film this video. And I'm probably going to be taking Wrath of the Cosmos off so I can Blitz maps. What we're doing for a mapping strategy outside of grand design is we're taking all of the east nodes in the far top left of the tree so that we get a bunch of free notables we're going to be taking seance right below the beast node seance as i mentioned earlier gives us five rare monsters in each of your map are possessed and those are how we're going to get our wing scarabs we're going to be taking all of the essence nodes essence is a huge backbone in this too as well to make a ton of profit 
there was no essence in the tab as I calculated all the cost of the essence and threw it into my other tab so I had space because I was just overflowing with essences. We're going to be taking the Conqueror nodes at the top of the map. The big takeaway from the Conqueror nodes is Conquerors have a 30% chance to drop Conqueror exalted orbs. Map bosses have a 30% chance to drop a Conqueror map. I have oversustained my Conqueror maps and have do dropped doubles. It's really good. We're also going to take Marital Forces, which gives us a 20% increased quantity of items found on our Conqueror maps. Your Conqueror maps have 20% pack size, and Eldritch bosses have a 20% chance to drop a Conqueror map. That part of the, the note, not as relevant, but we really, really, really want the pack size because more pack size gives us more harvest juice. And if we can sustain our yellow harvest juice, our cost of entry becomes less. And that's really, really, really good. We're also going to be taking all the major harvest nodes to get a bigger tier four plant. We're going to get more experience in harvest, more monster spawning in harvest. We're going to get an additional harvest or 50-50 chance for additional harvest. We're going to be taking packed with energy. Uh, it's a free node. And if Nico ever spawns on the map, we're just juiced out of our minds. If you have a ton of Nico missions, you can put Nico on every single map. Nico will give you a 35% damage buff for each Voltaxic Sulf Voltaxic Sulfite vein on the map. You'll also gain 50% increased movement speed for each vein on the map, and you just put Nico on the map, and it's just free damage and free movement speed, and you can go nuts. We're going to be blocking out every single league mechanic, period, to get more pack size. We're going to be taking all of these nodes in the beginning so that we get more master missions so that we get more free pack size we're gonna be taking all the essence nodes and we're gonna be taking all the strong box nodes why because essence is free strong box is free they don't add a lot of time to your map and they're quite wonderful we're gonna be making all of our strong boxes rare we're gonna be giving us operative strong boxes which is small sextants we're gonna be taking the essence nodes like i said so we get big essence pops we're gonna be taking seance so that mobs are guaranteed touched we're going to be taking this free Kirak node because it's right there. It's free pack size. It's absolutely worth just clicking it. And if you get extra Kirak missions and you want to reroll them a billion times, you're not complaining at all. And lastly, we're going to be taking Shaving the Valleys. Shaving the Valleys gives us an increased quantity of items. For Fortune Favors the Brave, a 10% increased rarity, a 10% increased pack size. Pack size is the big, 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 big selling point. We're going to be taking a lot of notables. This Atlas tree will be found down below comment section or in the description you can't miss it i'll put an imgur up for you and you guys can copy it directly if you think there is a better way to build this i'd love to hear about it my friend dom found another way to do invitations i haven't experimented with it yet i'll be doing that on stream and testing it out and once i have a good handle on if it's good if it's bad how it works i will release it to you guys with updated information so keep an eye out for that but yeah the basic gist grab a conqueror map grab the sextants put the sextants on roll the conqueror map and enchant the conqueror map with harvest harvest becomes free because we're running harvest get a lot of quant get a lot of pack size and go blow up a map pretty straightforward pretty standard now you're gonna say to me how many divines per hour i'm a path of exile player my maps take me about five minutes to run because i am not a good mapping build i am a very strong build but i am not a very good mapping build if you have an extremely strong mapping build you could probably bang these maps out in two minutes Mine are taking me between three and five. I'm also distracted because of chat. I'm also distracted because I'm doing a thousand different other things. I'm also distracted from trades. So I'm a little bit slower at doing this. My 100 maps took about 500 minutes on the average of five minutes a map. So if you find that you can open a map and you can blitz through it a lot faster, you will profit and get through these way more quicker than I. We'll talk about profits again. And we'll talk, well, when we talked about the cost, let's go into profits. Set our cost was 50 divines to set up do 100 maps it's a steep investment yes i fully agree with you 100 percent you're watching this video you're gonna say i'm insane but it's a steep investment i have told many people in chat that the build is very good or the strategy is very good a bunch of people in chat a bunch of people in the discord they've all started running it they've all doubled and tripled their investments um loaned out money to help people get it started i've given out sets of the sections to get people started and everybody's been able to make a profit on it so if you have the ability to borrow the divines or get roll the sections yourselves like i i would really recommend it a breakdown of all my profits which will we go over i know you guys want to skip to the end and see the profits i made 125 divines running this 
the 125 divines does not include the cortex map that i found the 125 divines does not include any of uh, the divination cards i found a bottle of faith card i found a bunch of simple snap cards i found a bunch of delirium orb cards the 125 divines is just the basics of what we found the conqueror maps the eldritch embers the invitations the crest all the bubblegum currency that i priced out and put a number on the blue life force the red life force the white life force the red maps and the wing scarabs so as you saw we get bad wing scarabs we roll them in the good ones the wing scarabs we found 306 of them for 100 maps i think it was like 101 maps 100 maps the total divine cost is 72 wing sextants can be sold at a four to one ratio if you choose to sell them in bulk uh i priced it out as the regular cost i did the average cost of 40c a map or 40c a wing sextant when i did my math came out to 72 divines if i took the 306 and i sold them in bulk at four to one which they sell like crazy i would have gotten 76 divines so i'm kind of undercutting myself there I over sustained my conqueror maps by 11 conqueror maps. I priced out the conqueror maps at 25 C a piece. They gave me 1.6 divines and conqueror maps. I had 593 grand eldritch embers. I priced them at 3 C a piece because of bulk that gave me about 10 divines and grand eldritch embers. I got 23 invitations for the elder slayers. They are 60 C a piece at the time of recording. They gave me about eight divines and invitations. I could sell them at three to one, four to one, depending on how I want to do it. I got 21 Veritania Crest. I got 32 Baron Crest. I got 25 Drox Quest and 25 or 23 Hunter Crest. They are not worth re-rolling at the cost of life force to change them into the ones that you need. Make sets, sell the sets. It's more profitable to sell a set. Um, the individual prices on each of the crests is about 10 C. Oh, I priced these wrong. Oh my God, I did the math wrong. <gasps> I put these at 3C a piece. They're not 3C a piece. My profits are insane. <gasps> no shot. They're 10C each. Oh my God. This is one of those moments where you have like an epiphany and you just leave it in because like people are going to be watching this and go, holy crap, you're crazy. So let's just update this to 10. Oh my sweet mother Hubbard. No way. <gasps> Oh my god. We gotta do this one too. No shot. Okay, so our profit's 129 divines. That's awesome. Anyways. If you made it this far and you're watching, I gotta just leave a like, leave a comment. Tell me how how silly I am because welcome to doing Excel math. And filming at two o'clock in the morning. Oh yeah. Yeah, feels good. Feels good. Feels good. Feels good. I priced the blue life force uh, you see at 6,200 divine or 6,200 per divine. We had 23,700 of it. Our red life force, we priced at 4,600 per divine. Uh, we had 16,400 of it. Our white life horns are four divines each, thanks to the changes in price. Our red maps, we priced at 3C a piece as per the math. So our grand total was 129 divines wow wow pretty good pretty good now i'm gonna do that really really fun thing where i grab a calculator and i look at like 500 minutes or i guess it's what 129 divided by 500 nope no no 500 divided by 129 i don't know math at 129 divided by 60 i don't know it's a lot of divines an hour 500 minutes is some number 500 it's 500 minutes divided by 60 it's 8.3 hours to do everything it took me a little bit longer as i was streaming and then we got 129 divines 129 divines divided by what we'll just say nine hours 14 divines an hour math math is beautiful math is wonderful yeah um I told my friends that this was like a 10 to 15 divine an hour strat and they were like bro double check your math triple check your math don't tell anybody they can make 15 divines an hour they're gonna ha they're you're, they're just gonna like put you out to dry and they're just gonna yell at you but i mean try it see what you think i like i said i have people in the discord who are running it and they they say it's nuts it's not just me and i mentioned um 
that my profits don't include. If you look at my profit sheet, my profit sheet does not include the all of the exalted orbs that I've gotten. So I've gotten four regular exalted orbs. I've gotten six crusader exalted orbs, three warlord exalted orbs, one hunter exalted orb. My profits don't include the smaller eldritch embers, which are probably worthless. My profit doesn't include any of the shaper guardian maps or elder guardian maps. My profit also doesn't include the incandescent invitations, nor does it include the profit of the four sets of justified ambitions, which gives me a random synthesized map, which could be anything. I felt like the gamble was unfair to try to say that that was anything. I have one cortex map, which is two divines, so you can tack on another two divines, another cortex card, which is like a couple hundred C, a bottled faith card fell off of one of the bosses, a bunch of Feral's fur car or Feral item cards. I found one mirror shard card because my favorite map is Defiled Cathedral. Um, I highly recommend doing Defiled Cathedral. I found two Dragonheart cards, a bunch of these Delirium cards. And this is all just extra profit that I didn't include in this because it just wasn't the standard. I also found a Divine Teardrop, which is multiple Divines. So like my profit of 129 is very undercut to what it should be. Probably like 140. Maybe 150. Yes. It's lucrative. It's good. It's solid. And it makes a lot of money really fast. What I don't know is I don't know if shape or elder maps are better in sustaining infinite, but you lose a lot of pack size. And I don't know if it's worth running the invitations and giving up the altars. Don't think it's worth giving up the altars for the invitation, but if you really like running the invitation, you should run the invitation. I have a lot of invitations. I have a lot of maps. Made a lot of money um it's probably the funnest strategy that i've done all league i love opening up a map i love blitzing it i love blowing it up i love not thinking i love killing the bosses i love the excitement of wing scarabs dropping i love the pack size on the map there's a lot of pack size and a lot of mobs and it, it just feels good it feels so good that i'm rolling a mapping character just to go do this and 100 maps flew by it feels good it's fun it's great i just don't want to like swap to exanguine eight chain every time i'm going to go do a map and essences are nice. I mean, like, my essence tab is, like, filling out nicely. I have a ton, an absolute metric ton of essences from doing this. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to use the essences to craft in the morning now and work on my next build. I can also sell all these essences for profit, but I'm going to end up keeping them all. And then we'll just be going from there. Going forward, if you've made it to here, I will be working on my ethereal knives build over the next couple of days maybe spectral throw and then i'm going to be starting on my league starter uh i need to get practice in for the league starter so that's going to be coming up in the next couple of days probably during the week or next weekend and then we're going to be leading into the mini events so if you're really excited about the mini events and you want to go down that journey with me i'll probably be doing all this those four weeks of mini events uh as hardcore i think it'll be really good stream content and i'm really looking forward to it so i want to share that with you and then i'll be sharing my league starter i think i'm going generals cry don't hold it to me yet We'll figure it out when we get closer to it. But for now, I'm out of here. I'm going to go work on this. And I'm probably going to go uh, run some more maps. So have a wonderful evening. So long for all of you to say goodbye, friends.